Hi, Professor Miles here, and we're going to uh, do this lecture today. We're going to try something new. We're going to uh, bring you this lecture live, and this lecture is all about the audio production console. The audio console in modern day radio or in the audio studio is still a primary piece of equipment. And there are basically two types of audio consoles. One type is a broadcast console, and the other is a audio production console. And we have both of those types of consoles here at Howard University. This particular console is a digital audio broadcast console. This is the console that you'll find in WHBC. It's digital. And here's the console that you will find in RTC. This broadcast console is also digital. Broadcast console primarily does three different things. It mixes, routes, and amplifies. The broadcast console is often referred to as a mixer because of its ability to set, select and have several inputs operational at the same time. The broadcast console has three selectable outputs and we're talking about the broadcast console in RTC, which many of you are familiar with. It has program one, and that's for the main on-air route, or the route directly to the speakers, audition. That's when you can listen to program items in the studio only. And then the auxiliary feed is for content that comes from another studio. Uh, that happens in many radio stations. Upstairs, we don't have that capability. Now, a broadcast console also come equipped with a selectable cue function. And this cue function is like a little mini speaker and when you hit the cue button, which is probably in on some consoles, it's located at the bottom of the fader and others, it's between the vertical fader and the selectable inputs. A cue speaker is, is a speaker that's housed inside the broadcast console that enables the operator to preview audio without disturbing the on-air transmission. Ah, this is RTC at Howard University. And this is a digital broadcast console that's at many stations or is used in many stations around the country. The audio production console is different from the broadcast console. The audio production console, the one that you see, the gray large one with a whole lot of buttons, like the one we have in our very own studio, is quite different from the broadcast console. In radio stations, depending on the company, the production studio console is similar to the on-air studio console. In many stations, the production studio can serve as a backup to the on-air studio. The audio production console, it mixes, routes, and amplifies as well. But basically, the difference between the broadcast production console and the audio production console is the ability to manipulate or change the characteristic of an audio input signal. And we'll show you where that's done. Ah, right here in the EQ section. You won't find an EQ section on a broadcast console, but you will find it on an audio production console. The audio production console has basically has three sections. An input section, an output or a master section, and a main master program. The channel strip is probably the 
most basic element of the audio production console. And once you understand the or understand each element of a channel strip, uh, you can operate the entire console uh, more easily. You'll have uh, special items uh, or special areas on the channel strip that you need to understand, look at and understand at the very top. As you can see on number one, that's the input source select and trim. And number two, the auxiliary sends area. And if you continue to go down and read, you could find out the different parts of a channel strip, which you should uh, know and understand. The channel strip provides the operator with the of the audio console the ability to manipulate and adjust the audio signal that is connected to the strip. The functions of the channel are especially useful when audio signals require adjustments. And most productions in radio require little use of the special buttons on the channel strip to manipulate the audio signal. Only experienced audio engineers should utilize the various functions of the channel strip. However, don't be afraid to experiment. An analog audio production console is like the one we have in RTR1. Basically, it operates in the same way as its larger version in RTR2. This is a digital production console, and with this console, mostly all of the uh, functions are inside of it, and it's driven by computer software. This is a virtual broadcast console that's inside of, you know, some computer. And it does typically the same thing that an analog console does. You just can't see or feel uh, how the virtual broadcast console operates. You just know that it does. Pro Tools is a virtual audio console. Also, Adobe Edition, which is what you're looking at right now, is also a virtual audio console. And of course, here's what we use, Pro Tools. And this is the virtual audio console. A virtual audio console operates on the same principle of an uh, of audio, similar to the analog console. The principles of operation of the virtual audio console is done through invisible line connections. Understanding ad analog audio makes virtual or digital audio easier to understand. The understanding becomes easier because in analog, the The understanding is easier because in analog, you can physically see how connections are made. Here's some do's and don'ts. Only use necessary controls and neutralize the console before and after using it. That means disengage the buttons that you've touched either on or off and adjust the gain control on the microphone either turning it on or off. Don't push buttons blindly. Don't push buttons that you don't know about. And have the record function engage with... Oh, and don't have the record function engage with Pro Tools. When, the, when Pro Tools are in record enabled and the fader are raised on the production console, you'll hear an ugly sound. <laughs> And that'll really scare you. So always disengage the record function in Pro Tools when you have the faders in the input section on the board up. And have the monitors and don't have the monitors on when recording. Thank you so much.